Ben Shapiro has accused his Daily Wire colleague of being disgraceful for her stance on the war in Gaza. Now here's what Ben Shapiro said about Owens in that video. And then the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this is disgraceful. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Shortly after Ben Shapiro scolded Candace Owens for her views on the Israel-Hamas war, Jeremy Boring, the CEO of The Daily Wire, fired her. Here's Andrew Clavin of The Daily Wire explaining why Owens was fired. She cannot abide it. It's not because Ben is his friend. I know Ben is a friend. He loves Ben, and we all love Ben, you know, a, and I understand that. But that's not why he can't abide it. He, he's, people say things, including me, people say things on this outlet all the time that Ben doesn't like and that Ben disagrees with. But Jeremy signs their checks and doesn't stop them. This is too far, not because of Ben, but because of what it really means. Here's what it really means. This hatred of Jews, this level of hatred of Jews is a hatred of God. A hatred of Christ. It's a hatred of Jesus Christ. Candace Owens firing has nothing to do with a hatred of Jews or God. Instead, it has to do with her denouncing Israel's actions in Gaza as genocidal. It is really unfortunate how anyone who criticizes Israel, it seems, is accused of anti-Semitism and, and that's just point blank wrong. Here's why it's wrong to label any criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic or anti-God. Anti-Zionism is not the same as anti-Semitism. Here are two very different terms that are regularly used interchangeably. Recently, Mark Lamont Hill, a US-based activist, academic and journalist, was sacked from CNN for calling for a free Palestine from the river to the sea at the United Nations. Later demands were also made for him to lose his job as a lecturer. The claim was that Lamont Hill's call was anti-Semitic. While the Universal Declaration for Human Rights says that all people are, quote, born free and equal in dignity and rights, the Israeli nation state continues to restrict freedom and undermine equality for Palestinian citizens of Israel, as well as those in the West Bank and Gaza. Yet it couldn't be clearer from both his speech and his long-standing body of work that he referred to the creation of one unified, secular, and democratic state. The only way this can be constructed as anti-Semitic is if no difference is made between the state of Israel and Jewish people worldwide. It's not a form of anti-Semitism. It's simply criticism of the criminal actions of a state. Criticism of the criminal actions of a state. Period. The campaign to silence anti-Israel views by labeling them as anti-Semitic has been orchestrated by this organization. The CEO of the Anti-Defamation League has declared that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism and has equated liberal critics of Israel with white supremacists. In fact, here's the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, equating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. 2016, things started to change when extremists started to feel like they had permission to express anti-Semitic attitudes. And then since the October 7th massacre, like the sewers, the, the lids have been blown off the sewers by the anti-Zionists. So, keep well, so I, don't want to, I don't want to conflate anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, but uh, they, they're, the they, same. They, it's, they're, they're two hues of the same color. Okay. But there's more. Here are just some of the companies that have signed ADL Workplace Pledge to Fight Anti-Semitism. 
More than 100 companies, including the likes of Google, Adidas, and UPS, have signed a pledge to fight anti-Semitism in their workplaces as the war in the Middle East intensifies. War in the Middle East intensifies. The Anti-Defamation League, known as ADL, has pulled resources and educational material for companies to follow, as well as creating an urgent appeal to call out violence and hate. Organization's Chief Impact Officer and Senior Vice President Adam Neufeld. Our view as ADL is we want them to use their bully pulpit. Use their bully pulpit. Most companies nowadays speak out on lots of issues. Anti-Semitism can't be exempt. Although the Daily Wire never signed the ADL pledge against anti-Semitism, they certainly didn't hesitate to use their bully pulpit to fire an employee for merely expressing her views on the Israel-Hamas war. This, despite the CEO of the Daily Wire making a statement a few months prior, assuring subscribers that the company values free speech and would never fire someone because they disagreed with them on an issue. Back uh, a few months ago when they were having these public feuds between Candace and Ben, the Daily Wire CEO, Jeremy Boring, put out a statement saying that they would not fire her because they don't regulate the speech of their hosts. They don't regulate the speech of their hosts, even when they disagree with them, saying, quote, Candace is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's. Unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of her contract in some way, her job is secure and she is welcome at Daily Wire. So. I don't know what changed since then. As far as I know, she hasn't been changing the content that she puts out on her show. Um, so uh, maybe they just finally got fed up, but certainly seems inconsistent with what they've said in the past about valuing free speech.